and try to run your household like the folk down the street running their household. I'm telling you, God's given for you to do it. And you mess it up because it's too big for you. You got to do it the way God gives. You got to respect the gifts he gives you. Here's the last thing. Here's the last thing. Y'all ready to go? Let's go. Here, 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 here's the last thing. If, if you're going to, if you got victory over your giants, exhibit proper motives. You, you got to embrace the proper method. Exhibit pure motives, rather. And then, my friend, you got to expect powerful miracles. You, you got to expect. Oh, God. You, you got to expect powerful miracles. You got time to read the Bible. Look at verse 41. 41, 41. Meanwhile, the Philistine with his shield bearer in front of him kept coming closer to David. He looked David over and saw that he was only a boy, ruddy and handsome, and he despised him. He said to David, am I a dog that you would come at me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. Verse 44, come here, he said, and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beast of the field. 45, 45, somebody shout 45. And David said, Arah, to the Philistine, he says, you come against me with the sword and the spear and the javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have. Goliath, nine feet tall, nine feet, nine inches. Yo, he has an armor on that's between 175 and 200 pounds. He, he has a helmet on that's, that's 35 or more pounds. He, he has a spear in his head that the head of the spear weighs 35 pounds. Now watch this. And the Bible says that he has a shield bearer. A shield bearer is a person that ran in front of Goliath with a man-sized shield to protect him. That's Goliath. Here's his shield bearer with a man-sized shield. And here's David. David says... Thank you. You come with spears, shields, and javelins. I come. <laughs> that, that's just all I'm trying to tell somebody. You talk about how big your problem is, how big the obstacle is, what everybody just said. Look, look repeat after David. So I come in the name of the Lord. I come, I come, I come, I come, I come in the name of the Lord Almighty. Look, look at verse 46. Say 46. He said, this day the Lord will hand you over to me and I'll strike your ugly... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Some of Kathy got it. That wasn't was King James. That wasn't King James. That was Kathy. <laughs> he says that I'll strike you down cut off your head today I'll give your carcass uh, the carcass of the Philistine to the army of the birds of the air and the beast of the earth All right, here, here's how you expect a powerful miracle that this is how you expect when you expect it here's what happens y'all when you expect a powerful miracle, miracle you got to report victory in advance you, you got to report victory in advance I'm, I'm going to say it again you, you have to report victory. Now, now some of you say, now, Pastor, isn't that bragging? The, doesn't the Lord say that we ought to be humble and walk in humility? Isn't that bragging? Yeah. If you proclaim victory in yourself. But David says, I come. In the name of the Lord Almighty. What, what David is saying is that God is the one who gives me the power to knock your head off. God is giving me the 
your strength. And so the glory is not mine. The glory belongs to him. And so you got to report victory. Oh, God. Go ahead and tell your neighbor in advance. It's going to work out. It's going to work out. Look, 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 look. Your neighbor want to know how you know. Because God is able. God, God, God is. Will y'all, will y'all do something for me? Look, look, he is face to face with Goliath in 46. I want you to go back to 26. Are you at 26? David asked the men standing near him, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Do, oh, hold up. Do y'all see that? I'm talking about when David first gets there. He hadn't even encountered Goliath yet. But he had already reported victory because he knew he was on the Lord's side. Go ahead and shout the victory. Say, it's mine in Jesus' name. It's done in Jesus' name. I declare it in Jesus' name. See, you, you, you got you to report the victory in advance. Listen, listen, and when you report the victory in, 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 in advance, often what you're doing is praising God on credit. It, it, God, I don't have to wait until you do it to bless you because I already know you're going to do it. Oh, God, my last up point, y'all, I'm through, I'm through, I'm through. Tell your neighbors, expect a powerful miracle. And, and, and the only way you do that is you got to report the victory in advance. And, and then you got to rejoice in and remember the help of the God. You got to rejoice in and remember the help of God. Two more verses and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm out of here. Y'all Yo, know what happened, don't you? David had those five small stones and a slingshot. And, and, Goliath is coming his way. David pulls that slingshot. That rock comes out of his holster. Hits Goliath right in the forehead. Sinks into his head. And he drops that nine foot nine inch giant. Now watch this. Now watch it. I'm just trying to show you. I'm just trying to show you. Because y'all. Sometimes God doesn't remove the giant. Sometimes he lowers the giant so you can cross over it. Here is this nine foot, nine inch giant vertically. But once he lands that rock in his forehead, he ain't vertical no more. He's laying horizontal. David had already proclaimed the victory before the fight ever started. And there's two verses I want you to see. Verse 52 says, Then the men of Israel and Judah surged forward with a shout and pursued the Philistines to the entrance of Gath. And look down at 54. David took the Philistines' head and brought it to Jerusalem, and he put the Philistines' weapons in his own tent, two things happen after the victory. The army of Judah shouted. They rejoiced. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. They rejoiced. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And David took his head and his weapons, dragged them back to his own tent. And I ask myself over and over again, why in the world would David expend such energy to get that man's weapons and his head back to Jerusalem? So that he always remember. Because this is not the last battle that David has to fight. But every morning when he gets up, he sees the javelin and the shield that belongs to Goliath and it reminds him that if God did it for me then there's nothing I'm facing today 
that God will not see me through. I need somebody to give Jesus praise in this place. I need some folk who not scared of your enemy. I need some folk who's full of faith that's going to go out this week and do what God has called you to do. Do it the way he's called you to do it. I need somebody to give the Lord Jesus praise. Hallelujah. 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 For the believer, for the believer, we ought to always have a spirit of rejoicing because we have a God on our side that's able. Your obstacle may be nine feet, nine inches tall. And you can't see your way through. But I've come to tell you that if you exhibit a pure heart, pure motives, if you have proper methods, and if you expect powerful miracles, God will do it on your behalf every time. Come on and give the Lord Jesus praise if you receive it.